I don't have any story. Like I just have uh, like books from a half-ass history class that didn't even tell the history right. You know, that's what I grew up with. Wrong history. So I'm just spitting it back out and kind of rebelling against that by doing this. I think of myself as like a post-identity artist, meaning like I'm looking at identity objectively. It's not a personal assessment of my own identity. I'm just interested in groups, like imaginary groups we belong to and the power of belonging to a group. You know, you can do a 23andMe, but that doesn't really explain the, the cultural significance of everything that you come into contact with that is the story. I'm interested in investigating the distance between African and African American. My iconography will kind of derive itself out of this kind of glance at culturally loaded things, just enough to make it feel new. It's kind of removing the spirituality from something so that you kind of get the husk or just the, the skin of it. These bones in the corner, yeah. I was wondering when someone was gonna ask me about the bones. It's not that I'm interested in morbid or death necessarily, it's kind of more the transition of living things into material or back into material. Like I have this here, this, this is a giraffe shoulder bone. It's familiar because of, well, because it's a bone, like we have, we know what they look like, but at this scale, there's like a, some abstraction. I like bones because of that automatic visceral response you have when you see it, you know, a real bone and all the little structures inside of it. Let's see. You start with an ideal and then you can only get it so far in the prototyping phase. We have to move on to the next phase. Isn't this the quietest air compressor you've ever heard? So if you stay in the prototyping phase, this is this weird in between. It can become dirty or they can become clean. It's like optional. This extruder should go. Let's see. If you guys weren't here, I'd still be talking to myself like this. <laughs> The inspiration for the installation behind me, which is entitled Background Colin Brown, uh, is the work of Stanley Brown, who is today known as perhaps the only black conceptualist of his generation, as well as one of the most radical. A crucial part of Matthew's installation is his adaptation of the artist book. The artist book was particularly important to Stanley Brown because it's a democratic form and anybody could buy a book and a book made no claim to uniqueness. Matthew has replaced Stanley's poetic texts with simple, very beautiful black pages. The three-dimensional printer was used to make an important part of the installation, and that's the two cubes set atop a display table. The three-dimensional printer prints in lines, sort of like icing a cake, and the volume of those two cubes each correspond in length to the distance that Matthew's mother walked every day that she worked, every morning and every evening. It's a privilege to not be able to talk about your physical self, you know, that's like James Terrell, like, I can make sculptures with light, you know, and that's what it's about. It's not about being a white American male, like, <laughs> I, I don't really care if people think my work is racial or not, it's not really, because that's already always going to be a part of my life, you know, so it's important for me to transcend those things. <laughs> 